What up dudes? There is a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to jump right into it, starting with the Super. So, Sandbox Super Tuning, the Hunter, the Gunslinger will start there. Golden Gun Super, increased damage to bosses by 40%. That includes Six Shooter and Celestial Nighthawk as well, stacking with it. Golden Gun Six Shooter, base damage increased from 275 to 300 per shot. Kills now return a bullet to the Golden Guns magazine. So you get a kill, you get it back, but the super meter will still continuously go away as you're shooting the Golden Gun shot. So you gotta get them quick to make that last and get the most out of it. But light them up perk, double precision damage bonus per stack on the buff. Practice makes perfect perk, stack limit increased from 3 to 5, super regen modifier increased by 20%. So pretty sick there, get the super back faster basically. Moving on. Mobius Quiver. Tethered targets now have the full damage increase rather than needing to be tethered by multiple shadow shots. So you can basically just they all, hit them with one and it's the full damage basically. So you don't have to do multiple shots on them. Additionally, the shadow shot damage bonus to tethered targets was increased. Increase the Mobius Quiver tether radius by 20% so it reaches out further. Increase the Mobius Tether lifetime as well, which means it stays alive for a while. Made it easier to fire successful shadow shots, so it's basically just easier to use, lasts longer, and does more damage. So really cool there. They even said they're going to keep working on this to make it better and to incorporate it more into the community so people will start using it more. So we can probably see more buffs on that in the future. Spectral Blade Super. The bonus damage resistance while in stealth was increased from 15 to 5%. While in Spectral Blades and in Stealth, total damage resistance is 62%. Total super duration while invisible was decreased by 3.57 seconds, so you're not going to be invisible that much longer anymore, and you're not going to have that much health pretty much, so it got a pretty big nerf. On to the Arc class, so the Arc Staff Super, Heavy Range and Slam Attacks are now increased from 220 to 300. Heavy Palm Blast Attacks increased from 400 to 700. Lethal Current, the bonus damage has been increased from 100 to 130, so all that stuff has been increased basically. It's Reckon on the Arc Hunter now. Now with Raiden Flux, the damage bonus was decreased from 20% to 13.5. That's the damage increase that Raiden Flux did. It's still going to be a lot because they buffed the Arc class in general, so Raiden Flux is still going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Now on to the Titans. So the Burning Maw Super, the spin attack was increased from 65 to 80 per hit. The slam detonation radius was increased from 5 to 6 meters, so it's going to blast outwards more, so be aware of that. Improved slam attack projectile tracking as well, so really big buff there on Titan. Now with the Sentinel Shield class, the final melee combo hit damage increased from 300 to 390. The damage to PvE combatants increased by 17%. So this is all those two classes basically just got ultimate, all three of them because of the Titan as well, which we already talked about. So Fist of Havoc, the Heavy Slam Attack, the R2 or whatever. The base damage decreased from 325 to 275. Damage to base elite and mini boss combatants was then increased back up 7%. And then damage to bosses increased by 23%, and then damage to vehicles by 60%. And then with Terminal Velocity, they changed the way the bonus damage from this perk is granted, so added a third threshold tier based on how long you are in the air before impact. So the higher you are in the air, the longer, the more damage. You have three tiers. Tier 1 does 4 hits. Tier 2 does 8. Tier 3 does 12 hits. The max damage per hit basically was increased from 3 to 4, so... This class is totally wrecking. Code of the Juggernaut, Fist of Havoc, Shoulder Charge energy was reduced by 83%. So that means you can smash the Shoulder Charge over and over and use it just as like a mobility tool to get from point A to point B to keep the Trample perk going even longer where you can have like up to minutes, they said, for this super. So Bottom Tree is super wrecking on Titan right now. But really the entire Titan itself and all its subclasses are a huge buff. Now onto the Warlock Voidwalker, Cataclysm Nova Bomb, initial detonation damage increased from 900 to 1500, so super wrecking with Nova Bombs, the detonation radius increased from 8 to 10 meters, Seeker Projectile detonation damage increased from 205 to 300, improved Seeker Projectile turning radius and homing to make it more consistent to use against bosses and single targets, so entire top tree on void is super beast right now that means that all the projectiles are tracking well and you got more blast radius more damage and bottom tree nova bomb was increased from 900 to 1200 the lingered damage on the nova bomb was increased from 10 to 23 per tick and then we have a kind of a huge nerf on the nova warp super so your slightly slowered movement basically when you're charging it so when you're charging it you don't move as fast charging costs more energy as well initial charge cost 
was increased by 60%. The sustained drain cost holding it was increased by 60%. The duration of it only lasts 6.8 seconds. Decreased super damage resistance from 56 to 54. So you're a lot weaker. And then damage against guardians increased by 27%. And then bottom tree on Dawnblade increased by 43%. And it lasts longer. So that's super, super beast. And then the Stormcaller is super. The max you can chain is one now. But it does, I guess, more damage because it's not chaining to multiple targets. And then as far as weapon tuning auto rifles, the base damage for the rapid fire went up by 9%. The high impact auto rifles by 5%. And then the adaptive by 6%. And then scout rifles, lightweights by 5% the rapid fire by 6% like the black scorpions and then all went up by 10% so scout rifles are hella beast right now Mananin on t really really Mananin is super beast right now which I will be showing you a build here lately about it but moving on to bows so bows made the effect of draw time from bow strings like the perks more noticeable like high tension strings flexible elastic polymer you can be able to tell the difference in those now the accuracy stat from high tension string was increased from 10 to 15 to better compensate for slower draw time and then there was a known issue the tooltip for high tension was not updated to show larger accuracy increase so in the future high tension string gets more accuracy and then legend of Accurus, the range is increased by 0.5 meters in pve and then 50 percent overall pve damage and then telesto reduced the base damage for each of the bolts by 19 percent so kind of a nerf but it also got increased as well so the initial bolt will not hit as much but the explosion will hit a lot harder but moving on to snipers, so the base damage for the rapid fire frames was 8% increase. You can two shot to the body in Crucible now. Grenade launchers, they tweak grenade launcher projectiles to feel more consistent on direct hits. Proximity grenades can no longer impact directly. Prevent special ammo grenade launchers from one shotting with the perk active. Increase ammo reserve size for the special ammo grenade launchers. And then increase initial spawn of ammo in PvE basically. So when you spawn you get more ammo. That's really the, the bulk of it though. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you didn't want to read about it, you just found out the majority of it right here. There was a lot of other changes in Crucible, such as like ammo spawn times and things like that, but I wasn't going to, you know, dive too much into that. It just basically, it, you don't get it as much anymore. A lot of other little changes like that to Crucible happened, but I was mainly focused on just the core changes of PvE and minor Crucible things. But that's pretty much it, dudes. Hope you found that useful, and I'll catch y'all next time in space. And stay tuned, I'll be putting a new build video up later that goes hand-in-hand -hand with the Mananin, and I'll catch y'all on that one too, dudes. So, later on.